Okay. I gotta remember to look at the camera. Hi everybody, my name is Layla and um, I usually do coloring gameplay, but today I didn't feel like doing it at all. I was like, eh, I don't feel like it. It's gloomy outside, it's cold. So I got the rainbow on, but also the darkness, which I think is a very good theme for today's video. And that is going to be my, some of my choice picks of my vinyl collection. I've been collecting vinyl ever since I was um, like the end of my middle school years. So I think end of eighth grade, like the summer I was about to be a freshman in high school, I started collecting them. So that's been a while, I won't say how long. <laughs> So I started doing it then. I try to make sure that the copies that I get are the ones that were printed in the year of its release. Not that I'm like a snob or anything. I just prefer it because I feel like it's analog. It just sounds so different than digital remastering. And I like how it sounds in original format. And I personally just like the sound of the nuances of listening to records in general, which, you know, the crackling and it sounds raw and real. So it's not polished entirely. And I like that, I prefer that. So yeah, I thought I'd do a video on that today. And this is in no particular order. I just looked through some of my vinyl and picked out which ones I was like, oh yeah, let me talk about this one today. Let's get started. I kind of have an eclectic taste and fun fact, I used to have a radio show in college and that is what I named it. I called it the eclectic taste and I played whatever. <laughs> so my first pick will be Black Sabbath, Master of Reality. I don't know if you can see it. Okay. You can kind of Master of Reality. I love this album. This is one of my favorite Black Sabbath albums. Sorry, I'm adjusting my seating. Ow. I got hurt. Okay. Okay, it's good. It's all good. Ignore the background. There's just junk in the back. This one is one of my favorites. Like I said, it has Sweet Leaf, of course. Children of the Grade. Uh, Grade? Children of the Grave. Sorry, I can't speak. Into the Void. Just some of them. It's, it's a very nice... This one in particular doesn't have the best sleeve on it, but it doesn't matter. I just, you know, sometimes I buy um, just that physical vinyl. And if it doesn't really have a good sleeve, I'll just go like on Discogs or Disco G's, whatever, however you pronounce it, and look for a sleeve that's better quality. But yeah, first of all, Black Sabbath, Master of Reality. Really good album. I think this is a must have in your collection. Moving on, this is where the eclectic taste comes in. Dusty Springfield. Now, when I first heard Dusty Springfield, I didn't know she was British. I thought she was English or like English as in American. When I listened to this, this is my first record that I listened to. I think I actually inherited this from my aunt who also really gave me a lot of my collection to start with. She was an avid collector and um, she actually had a full warehouse of records and she gave me a couple copies because she would collect them over the years of, um, you know, albums she loved and artists she loved and she just buy a bunch of them. And so I went through them with her and she uh, recommended me some that I didn't know about. And also yeah, I found some that I had already been wanting to get and she let me have. Dusty Springfield, kind of a soul R&B type sound. She does a lot of covers on here. Um, actually, I think this is like a whole cover album. Yeah, this is a whole cover album. And one of my favorite tracks on here is uh, You Don't Have to Say You Love Me. And I like her version of La Bamba. I, I really do. And I also love Oh No, Not My Baby. That one's very nice if you're in a romantic kind of soulful 60s mood. I'd recommend Dusty. All right, next one is a classic, a classic, classic, classic. And I have to tell you, my aunt was a huge Deep Purple fan and I inherited so many Deep Purple records. I really like Deep Purple. Personally, not one of my favorite 
groups as far as you know when it's david coverdale kind of came in i love david coverdale but i prefer like ian gillen um years in the early years you know john lord and um rishi blackmore this awesome but if you know deep purple oh i'll oh, oh, already revealed if you know deep purple you should know which album i'm fixing to pull up which is machine head a machine head is a classic deep purple album and this one's in really good condition i'll just show that i was lucky to get this one from my aunt she had a couple of these uh, copies of these and sorry i'm just admiring the beauty of this record tons of hits on it smoke on the water space truck and highway star it, it's a must-have in the collection if the black sabbath record wasn't this one is definitely a must-have it's heavy it's fast-paced and i really do miss john lord i remember when he died i was what um now you're gonna be able to do the math to see how old i am <laughs> i think i was going into my junior year of high school yeah it was about the same time that ray manzarek died who i love also but yeah deep purple machine head okay next one up is one of my all-time favorite artists i grew up with him i am inspired by him this was one of my original inspirations as far as music goes him and david bowie this is alice cooper's killer now i really like billion dollar babies and that is probably my favorite alice cooper record i would show that but my boyfriend and i recently moved from la to the south and i think that the moving company we used lost a bunch of my records and collections because there's some that i cannot find at all i looked through everything so that pretty much sucks but this is why i'm showing killer instead of billion dollar babies because i really like killer and i love love it to death as well one of my favorite songs on this album is be my lover and i have always loved that song that's one of my favorite alice cooper songs of course you got dead babies under my wheels oh my god under my wheels that one's a classic that one every time i go to see alice cooper that one's always on the set list never fails and there's no reason why it shouldn't be because it's a great song i love alice cooper i have always loved his style i love i'm a big fan of horror movies and grindhouse and b films and all that kind of stuff like the classic universal i'm also a huge hammer horror film he's all about that and all about dramatics and actually glam in the early days which is what i like that's my kind of combo i go to which is sort of like a goth glam rock but also kishy amalgamation of eccentricity so if i had to describe myself i guess that would be it moving on we have chuck Barry, and this is St. Louis to Liverpool, and this is actually a Japanese release. And I inherited this from my grandma on my dad's side, and she was Japanese. So she had a lot of the Japanese releases of these records. I mean, this one's just a great Chuck Berry album. He's the king of rock and roll. Like, come on, him and Little Richard. They're two of my favorite musicians. This one's a really great uh, record gets you you might know one of the tracks on here is never can tell which is famously used in pulp fiction where they're dancing the dancing scene <laughs> she gets that five dollar milkshake and there's no bourbon in it but <laughs> anyway johnny b goods on here you never can tell brenda lee rock and roll music oh man just it's a it's a great record and i'm really excited and happy that i was able to get a japanese release going on to this next one i think this is a remastered version of this but it is one of my all-time favorite beatles records and it is abbey road this one is another record that i think is just a staple to have in your collection i used to play this all the time i was an art student and whenever I was working on an art project, I would play this record all the time, especially Side 2. Side 1 is amazing, but I also think that Side 2 is really great as well. Side 1, Come Together, Something, Maxwell Silverhammer. I actually like Octopus's Garden, okay? I like Ringo. It's my fave, okay? I have to say, I Want You 
just fantastic. Just the instrumental, the emotional composition within that piece is fantastic. And, and I'd recommend just listen to it. I used to play that track specifically over and over again. But side two, it has Here Comes the Sun. And because, and every time I hear because, fun little side bit, I think of the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band movie where Alice Cooper actually sings it. And I like it. You never give me your money. It goes into all of this sort of like, you know how Rush did it with 2112 where they had like four, I'm gonna sound like a dumbass for not knowing it. It's like a medley, but, but not. They're full songs within, anyway. You know what I'm saying? It, it all goes together, but it's just such a fantastic release of emotion. And this, you can really feel this was an ending to just an era and to a band that changed music history, honestly. And I think they capture that very well in the last tracks on the on side two. Abbey Road, obviously it's a fantastic record definitely a staple to have in your collection all right next love this v trogs wild thing i love 60s bands like the sonics like the count five that were these kind of the animals you have these really heavy sounds I think inspired a lot of later 70s punk rock and they sound so heavy and so free and raw and real and the Trogs is a group that is just like that, and I love them. And Wild Thing, of course, that's a classic album of theirs. Yeah, it's missing the bag. <laughs> but that's okay, I can just get another sleeve for this. Such a good record, such a good group, and I highly recommend it. Listen to it if you haven't. All right, moving on to one of my favorite groups, and one of my favorite glam rock groups of the 70s and that's sweet and this is desolation boulevard i love sweet they are one of my favorite groups of 70s glam rock groups also the new york dolls really like them too this one is a classic sweet album to have i think everybody who likes sweet or generally knows of them that collects records has this record because it is the sweet record it has so many good tracks on it one that people recognize now, I think, highly is Fox on the Run because it was used in a promo, I think, for a trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And I think it's on the soundtrack as well, even though they didn't use it in the film. But that's a fantastic song, honestly. Sweet F.A. is good. ACDC, Ballroom Blitz, honestly, that's the most iconic song off of this album. But yeah, I just love the kishy elements in in Sweet Records and obviously I love the sound and the swing that they bring to it. And yeah, it's just such an indulgent, glam rock in general is such an indulgent, almost overindulgent, <laughs> self-indulgent uh, genre. Yeah, I like that. Sweet Desolation Boulevard. Okay, Flowers. Now, this one, I haven't heard many people discuss this and I, I can be wrong and I can be so daft when it comes to, you know, knowing what people are talking about or whatever. I don't know. People could be talking about this record. I haven't heard it in my circles, but anyway, doesn't matter. Flowers is one of my favorite records of theirs. Honestly, they have so many hits on this too. Ruby Tuesday, Let's Spend the Night Together, Lady Jane. I love their cover of My Girl on this. I, I really do. Let's Spend the Night Together. Every time I hear that, I just go back to the time. Actually, it's one of the, I think maybe it's the first concert my boyfriend and I went to. We saw the Rolling Stones in 2015. So amazing. I also love Sticky Fingers and fun fact, 2015 when we saw them i have always loved the track moonlight mile they didn't have it on the set list and it we just lucked out that it was voted the song that was voted on that they were going to sing only that night so i got to hear one of my favorite rolling stone songs live and that's an experience i'll never forget but yeah flowers try not to cover up the album but i recommend listening to it if you haven't i think it's kind of overlooked but I could be wrong. I actually inherited this album from my papa, who is my mother's father, and this was originally his record that he got when it came out. So he was a Rolling Stone fan too. 
Moving on, this is a record that I got from my aunt. When I received this record, I really didn't know much about her, but I'm glad that I got this because it made me get a lot more of her records and appreciate how much of a queen she is in rock and roll. And that's Susie Quattro's Your Mama Won't Like Me. Such a catchy song. That's the title track. It's such a great, sexy, just rock and roll song. I bit off more than I could chew. The first song is amazing. It's a great opening. And it's just, this whole record is so dynamic and sexuality and electric. And Susie Quattro is one of my favorite female uh, rockers, just personally. Your Mama Won't Like Me by Susie Quattro. Another one I recommend, a choice LP. Okay. This video is really long. It's a lot longer than I expected. I always think that I am talking very concisely and am very organized with this, but then when I look at the timer, it, it's like 20 minutes already. We're getting down to it. The next one is a classic from this group. This is a psychedelic band, and I really like psychedelic bands from the 60s. Iron Butterfly in Agata da Vida. Classic Iron Butterfly. Everybody knows that song, and I really like that the entire side two of this album is in Agata da Vida. And if you have not sat down and listened to the full 17 minutes, I highly recommend doing so. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal piece and composition. It is great. Maybe I'm just saying that because I play the piano and organ and stuff. So a lot of these elements that we're using here have inspired me. It is a beautiful song to listen to, but it has some other I Am Butterfly records, but by far, I think this one's really, really great. And I like flowers and beads also, and my mirage is really good. Iron Butterfly in Agata de Vida. Definitely, I think it's a staple if you're a psychedelic fan. Okay. Getting down to the last two. This one is one of my favorite Motown groups. They are the Four Tops, and this is their greatest hits record. Now they have a bunch of great records all throughout their career, in my opinion. It has all their great hits. Can't Help Myself, Bernadette, Something About You, Reach Out, I'll Be There. It's the same old song. That's actually one of my favorites. And it also is enhanced as one of my favorites because it is a song featured in a Coen Brothers film that I love, their first one that they did, called Blood Simple. The Four Tops are, in my opinion, one of the greatest Motown groups ever, ever. If you are looking for a fast intro to the Four Tops, I would recommend the Greatest Hits record because it has all their hits that were released so far. Now, the last one that I'm gonna do, I've probably said this about every single artist that I've introduced here, but this group is one of my all time favorite groups, The Doors, and this is The Soft Parade. This record is probably my favorite Doors record. The condition of this is, on the inside is really good. So beautiful, look at that. Jim Morrison is such a poet, such a unique poet and artist. I have his poetry books and he really wrote some fantastic material. Can you imagine if the doors were in the 80s? <laughs> I don't know. And you know what? I like Ray Manzarek solo stuff. This one is such a great record. It's a great transition album, I always say this, between winter and spring because I feel like it just has that sort of uplifting vibe to it and sound. It feels like it's a rebirth. It's optimistic. I mean, the first so song on here is Tell All the People and then it goes into Touch Me and like I said, all of these songs are amazing. I love every single song on this record. Wild Child, Run and Blue, just it has such a youthful, I don't want to say innocence because it, it's not. It ha almost has an aspect of youth. It's very optimistic and it reminds me of springtime. Like, like I said, the rebirth, the, all that spring symbolizes on the contrast of that i also recommend waiting for the sun as a good transition album from summer to fall and going into winter soft parade highly recommend it it is my favorite 
Doors record. I have to say my second one is between Waiting for the Sun and Strange Days. Yeah, those were the choice LPs that I had picked out to discuss today, some of my collection. Who knows, maybe I'll do a part two to this. I really enjoyed it though. I really enjoyed talking about music. Let me know what some of your favorite records are in albums and groups. Obviously, I gravitate more towards songs of yesteryear. It can be modern though too, it doesn't matter. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video. Oh, it's not ending. <laughs> this one I thought it was gonna end, is not it? Oh, you know what? I should do a thumbnail. Oh, 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 let me get one of these records. Oh, let me call two of them, actually. Let's see, which one do I do? Which one would be the most common, honestly? You know what? Just gonna take a photo. So, into here. <laughs> okay, bye!